and this is AJ Block. We're with The Ditch Project in Brooklyn, New York, and today we are excited to show you how to play guitar and handpan together. This is a great combination. We play all the time combining these instruments and it's really great. Each handpan has a certain number of notes that lets you play different chords and we can do some chord changes also just playing the scale. You can get a lot of different colors and textures combined with the guitar which has infinite harmonic possibilities. You can get a lot of good combinations and a lot of unique different sounds. We're going to talk a little bit about music theory, a little bit about guitar technique and rap technique and how we can think about the instrument and apply those ideas to finding different textures, different melodies and chord changes that we can use so that the instruments sound harmonious together. Since both of these instruments create chords, we're gonna be careful not to step on each other's toes. We're gonna find out how we can fit inside of each other's sounds. This particular rap drum is the A integral scale, and we love it with guitar because A minor is one of the greatest keys on guitar for playing. It's one of the most simple keys because you can play a lot of open chords. Some of the chords include A minor, C major, G major, E minor, F, and you know, other than F, all the ones I just named are all open chords on the guitar and really simple to play. This particular scale has the notes A, B, C, E, F, G. So it's basically like a natural minor scale without the note D. It's a six note scale and some of the notes repeat themselves. So here's what the scale sounds like on the Rav. I can play the same notes on the guitar. In lots of different positions and in different ways. So I know that any note that I choose on the guitar that is also on this instrument will sound good together. So for starters, we can just both play from this certain collection of notes, from these six different notes. improvisation and that was really cool I really enjoyed that. Yeah, that was nice. So we don't really know what each person is gonna play we're both improvising we're improvising with which rhythms that we choose and which notes we're gonna land on out of the collection that we have available AJ only has the notes that he can play on the rap drum there but I have to select on the guitar not to play certain other notes the guitar has all 12 pitches whereas the rav is only offering six out of the 12 or half as many so as a guitar player, you need to be selective and be careful that you're not playing notes that really clash or don't resonate with that instrument. For instance, this instrument is an A integral scale. So the tonic is A or the root note, the note that you hear most often, it really reinforces a sound that is an A minor sound. So if he plays the note A and I play the note B flat, they really don't match. It's not that they're wrong, they just are tense in relation to the scale. So the A minor scale is a great place to start. A little bit, just so you know what I was doing when we were just playing, I was trying to stay within the framework of moving up and down the scale, turning around at different points, but I wasn't really jumping. So I was sticking with that original scale that I showed, um, you know, but I might've gone like this at a certain moment. is scale movement on the rav. I wasn't trying to play any chords or do any larger interval jumping, like really low to high notes, jumping around like that. I was just doing the scale. One thing to consider when playing with another instrument is what register are they occupying? So a register means are they playing down low, in the middle, or up high? Just like on a guitar, we have a low E string. We can play a higher E or an even higher one. Or you can think of a man's low voice.
voice and perhaps a soprano, a woman's high pitched voice, this is talking about register. So if we're both occupying a similar range, it might get in the way or get a little bit muddy. So you can listen. It's really important whenever you're playing with another musician to listen closely to what the other person is playing. If I hear that AJ is in a low area, I might try to occupy a higher space to fill in that gap. Or if he's playing in a higher place, then I'll come down low so that we complement each other. It's important to think about the balance of the sound. If he's playing really busy, maybe I'll back off a little bit and let him have a moment to express. And then he might simplify his ideas and I'll play something more complicated. consider starting something together. Perhaps somebody's already composed a piece and you want to learn it. Either the guitarist has written something or the person with the rap drum has written a melody and a figure that they like. But if we're coming from a place of improvisation, maybe you never met the person before or maybe you want to create something new, there's a few things to consider. You could let the rav begin first and introduce something alone and the guitar doesn't have to start right away. Another option would be to have the guitar start something and then the rav joins later. And the third option would be that both start together. Maybe you count it in, like one, two, three, four, play. So these different options of just how to begin the improvisation are available to you. So it's good to consider that. Another way that you can influence each other's ideas is by developing simple rhythmic motives. So maybe we both agree that we're going to improvise on a theme that's based on the rhythm ta, 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 ta. If we're in 4-4 four, four time, one, two, three, four. Ta, 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 four. One, ta, 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 four. Ta, 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 ta. So that can become a generating motive for all of our ideas. So here's what it sounds like if we improvise together based on this rhythm. So we help focus ourselves by choosing a rhythmic motive beforehand. You can choose maybe two rhythmic motives and have the first section be based on the first rhythm and then kind of look at each other and nod when you want to go to the next part and communicate with your eyes, communicate with body language as well. It's important to occasionally check in with the other person, acknowledge each other. If you're just too focused on your own playing, it's going to be really hard to communicate with someone else. Playing with someone is just like having a conversation. You have to listen sometimes and talk sometimes. Leave space, feel what the other person is expressing, and have a real conversation, not just insert your own thing on top of everything that's happening. There's a tendency to ramble a lot, maybe you know a scale and some patterns and you're just, you just want to shred, you know? But we want to create something a little bit more musical, so narrowing things down with a focused motive of rhythm like this is a good way to restrict yourself a little bit in a way that makes a more musical result. So aside from playing around with scale ideas, individual notes, we can also work with chords because when we stack notes in the scale on top of each other, we create a series of harmonies. There's music theory information that we have available to teach you how to make chords and how to spell chords, what a triad is. Adrian's got a whole series of videos called 90 Second Guitar Lessons dedicated to all this sort of music theory technique and all the knowledge of of how to play different music on guitar. So we're gonna to link to that below. So definitely check out 90 Second Guitar Lessons. But just to help you out now in a quick and easy way, the reason we chose the A integral scale is because, as AJ mentioned, the guitar uses a lot of open position chords, which most beginners and intermediate players already know. So chords that will be compatible with this instrument are A minor, C major, E minor, and G major, primarily. 
There are other colors and variations, and we'll include a longer list with more jazzy voicings and more colors for those of you who are more advanced with the guitar. But for now, we can consider playing together a simple chord progression. So maybe we'll just do something like A minor to C to G to E minor. And I can establish that on the guitar. So that's A minor, C, G, E minor. And AJ can play those too. he was gonna tell me we were gonna end and I just like felt it so I knew as soon as we got to that next downbeat to just let it go. So that's just one example of countless types of chord progressions that you could make. The chord colors are a little bit limited right now because we're giving you just the basic ones but instead of doing A minor C G E minor you could do A minor E minor then G then C or any other permutation of those four so you can just write them down in different orders and try them out and see what you like. Maybe there's a song that you sing if you're a singer and you play and you know that it has those chords in it. So then you can sing and play that song and you know that it's gonna work well with this instrument. All of the different rav drums have different collections of notes in the family of scales that they create and you can make many beautiful sounds with the different scales. We're just showing you this one, but each different rav will have its own arrangement and available chords that work well with that instrument. If you're interested in learning all the different RAV harmony, let us know which RAV specifically you want to know about. And what's great about this is we're just demonstrating how to play with a guitar and a RAV drum, but the same chords, because it's music theory, and music theory applies to all instruments, you can play those chords on the piano, or on the harmonium, or on the shruti box, or other instruments that you want to play together. So perhaps AJ and I are playing, but then we also have a friend who plays the violin or another instrument. And I can tell that person, we're playing in the key of A minor. So they know that they can use the A minor scale. He's playing the chords from the A integral scale. And I'm also playing chords and scales related to that. So it's a language that we can all speak. One other thing to consider, especially as a guitar player, is that you have different types of rhythmic approaches. You can strum the guitar, but you can also do finger picking. So remembering that you have access to these different textures is useful. We just did an example where I was strumming, but here's an example where I'm finger picking instead of strumming. And maybe I'll switch back and forth to show you the difference. We'll do the same progression. One, two, three, four. up all these textures, strumming and finger picking, improvising scales, dialoguing back and forth, then you can really go on a journey. You can practice playing sections quietly and then building louder or doing the opposite. Really try to make use of dynamics or volume in music, which can have a lot of emotional impact. So here's an example of us playing something very quietly and then getting louder and then bringing it back down again so that you can see what it's like when you explore that. And we can do it in maybe about eight or 16 measures, just a okay. short example of that. So 
shape or an arc with our dynamics. The equivalent of finger picking versus strumming on guitar is also available on the handpan. Basically with the chords you have the option to arpeggiate them, meaning play one note at a time, versus playing multiple notes at a time. So if I'm going to play an A minor chord, you know, if I want to play all three notes I can do that. I'm using two fingers on this hand to hit both of these notes thumb is good for that too. Or even just two notes. So if I, you know, if I wanted to play all the chord changes, it would sound like this. Now, if I want to arpeggiate those same chords, I would basically find a pattern where I'm playing one note at a time. arpeggios. They're both collections of the same notes, but one is staggered one at a time, and the other one is all the notes stacked on top of each other, happening simultaneously. We don't always have to play in time, like there's a drummer or a djembe player or a percussionist or someone with a shaker. If you don't have that, you can be a little bit more flexible and loose with the music, so that's called be playing rubato. If you like the sound of the guitar and the rav drum together, please check out my new album, While You Are Awake. super enjoy it. It's a great album just to listen to for when you need relaxation, meditation, any type of music for that. Absolutely perfect. Thank you so much for listening and we look forward to sharing more with you. Peace! Peace.